If you're into the 3D printing hobby, you are most definitely familiar with the process of leveling your bed. Uh, on some printers, it's an occasional task that you only have to think about if you really yank on the bed plate or, or change the build surface. Uh, on other printers, like the Tron CX-5SA, it's a constant nuisance you'll have to deal with almost every print. On this printer, thanks to the magic of triple Z bed leveling, I have never touched the bed leveling screws, and it wouldn't matter if I did. So now regardless of your printer type or size, we all know the process. You zero your Z-axis, put a sheet of paper under the nozzle, and, and adjust the screws until you feel a little resistance. There are many factors that affect how often you have to go through this process, but it's something we've all done more than a few times. On large cube style printers like this, the most common setup is to have a bed platform supported by a single threaded rod and two smooth rods on each side of the bed platform. Each of those rods are controlled by a stepper motor. The most simple setup is to have those motors linked to a single stepper driver. Now, using a single stepper for both motors means that both motors will spin when the steppers are engaged, so the motors will be synced as long as they're energized. However, once the motors are powered off, then they can spin independently and the bed can tilt left to right. Now, there are workarounds to manually re-tilt the motors, uh, but using a single stepper with two motors is bound to require a bit of manual maintenance. Now, second to independent Z-steppers is a linked Z-setup in which the Z-threaded rods are linked by belts, either directly to each other or to a single Z-stepper shaft. This should keep the shafts in sync even when the motors are unpowered. However, if you do have something that jams the bed or, or you change something with the build platform, uh, getting everything synced back up again can be a bit of a chore. You have to maybe loosen some grub screws or, or force some belts. Upgrading to dual independent Z motors is probably a great balance between cost and efficiency. Uh, if each Z motor has its own driver, then the firmware can control each motor independently. You can take a reading from one side of the bed and take a reading from the other side of the bed uh, and offset the motors to fix the tilt along the X axis. In that setup, you can yank on your build platform all you want and the tilt adjustment should fix whatever you did from a stepper motor perspective. Uh, but you still have to deal with bed leveling screws to deal with tilt along the Y axis. Now, if you really didn't want to touch bed leveling ever again, the solution is simple, triple independent Z motors. Three points make a plane, and the same tilt adjustment feature that fixed tilt along the X axis with two motors can fix tilt adjustment along both the X and Y axes with three motors. So most printers end up settling on some kind of dual Z solution, whether it's linked or independent Z motors, uh, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of triple Z solutions on the market, uh, especially ones that are generic enough to be used with you know most cube style printers. Uh, and it's probably because things get a lot more complex when you utilize a third stepper. The big issue is that with two steppers and a build platform that utilizes micro adjustment screws, the expectation is that the build platform will be perpendicular to the threaded rod and linear rods that support it, uh, and any adjustment that you need to make will be made via the fine adjustment screws. With triple Z motors, there is no micro adjustment. Uh, the motors will adjust until the bed surface, not just the bed platform, is level. Uh, which means that the rods are not always perfectly perpendicular to the bed plane. You can't just use solid static mounts that assume all of the rods will be perfectly perpendicular. Uh, that will cause a tension in the rods uh, and, and could lead to skipped steps and messed up prints. Instead, you need a mounting solution that allows for some angular travel uh, as well as some distance flexibility between the three mounts. Now, I experimented with some hinge designs that ended up getting overly complex uh, and some compliant mounts that, that look cool but may have questionable durability. Uh, but the design that seems most interesting was the ball and cup design that RatRig uses. If you're not familiar with RatRig, they design awesome heavy-duty printers uh, but are generally overbuilt for what I'm trying to do and probably what most people are trying to do. Uh, for instance, their triple Z solution uses expensive linear rails and it's mounted to big, thick 3030 extrusions. I was initially skeptical of their ball and cup design as I wanted to ensure that whatever I came up with used cheap commodity parts and, and the balls and cups seemed like they would be kind of proprietary, but uh, it turns out that no, uh, metal balls with little threaded holes are common in the Delta world. Uh, and the cups are, are actually just round magnets with a countersunk hole drilled in them. Uh, both are cheap and readily available on Amazon and eBay. 
Of course, I also wanted to avoid uh, the expensive linear rails and stuck with smooth rods. Uh, in fact, my design calls for five or six smooth rods, uh, four of which you should already have, uh, and three threaded rods, two of which probably came with your printer. Now, I used two smooth rods and one threaded rod on each of the side mounts. As stated in previous videos, threaded rods are used for distance, not linearity. And if we only use one linear rod per carriage, uh, the carriage is free to spin around that linear rod, uh, given any defects in the threaded rod. So the linear rods use solid mounts on both the top and the bottom, uh, and the threaded rod mounts directly to a pillow bearing. Um, I only put in a bottom one, but you can also put in a top pillow bearing as well. I like this setup far more than mounting threaded rods to some form of spring coupling. Uh, however, it does mean that you're going to need timing pulleys and GT2 cable loops uh, to attach to the motors. So I've designed a few platform mounts with the ball mounting hole in different positions based on your frame geometry. Uh, generally, you'll probably want to follow this setup though, uh, which pushes the balls out as far to the extents of the frame as possible. For the rear mount, I went with only a single linear rod and a single threaded rod. Uh, the idea here is that the other two gantries will have twice the holding power, so even if uh, the somewhat less stable two-rod gantry has a little slop, uh, the other mounts should keep everything aligned. Uh, but there's nothing to stop you from using a three-rod solution in the rear as well. And to be honest, I started off with all two-rod solutions, kind of not really realizing that uh, I may have that, that rotational problem, uh, and I didn't really see any Z-banding. So depending on the quality of your threaded rods, you might be able to get away with just two-rod solutions all around. Your mileage will definitely vary depending on the quality of your threaded rods, though. The bed platform is just a simple 2020T. Uh, the X extrusion aligns with the left and right carriage balls, uh, and the Y extrusion aligns with the rear carriage ball. Uh, I have these little 2020 clips uh, that hold the cup magnets in place, uh, and it's pretty easy to align everything once you get the carriages installed. To mount the bed plate to the extrusion, uh, I use some regular M3 bolts and, and, and boat nuts. Uh, the rear mount is offset a little bit, so I could put in a, some strain relief, uh, but that's optional, really. Now, you will never have to adjust these mounting screws. Uh, however, I still wanted a little padding to account for heat expansion of the plate or, or in case the print head comes crashing into the platform. Uh, so I kept these little silicone pads, but I, I screwed them down really tight. There's, there's no play in these silicone pads. Then to install the platform, all you do is align it with the rods. and place the clips on the cups. As for electronics, you're going to need a board that supports 3Z steppers. I'm using an octopus, which has just a ton of stepper driver ports, um, but other boards may work, uh, especially if you can repurpose a second extruder stepper or something along those lines. Now, if you're not familiar with tilt adjustment at all, it works by configuring the X and Y offset of your threaded rods, uh, and then you give XY locations of points to sample on the bed. Uh, when tilt adjustment runs, the printer will take readings from the two or three sample locations and do its best to calculate motor movements necessary to zero out the tilt. However, uh, since the, uh, the, the offset measurements and, and even your bed sensor are not 100% exact, uh, it can rerun that balancing adjustment multiple times until a difference threshold is reached. For me, I use 1 20th of a millimeter. Uh, it'll keep running the tilt adjustment until the readings come in within 0.05 millimeters. Now, the system works incredibly well, and while 90% of the time I didn't have to worry about or adjust anything even using dual independent steppers, uh, now that I'm using triple Z, I never have to adjust anything, ever. So that's my triple Z setup, uh, and I believe it should work with most cube style printers. I tried to drop the top mounts enough that your carriages can pass by. Uh, it mounts to 2020 extrusion on the bottom. To keep costs as low as possible, it reuses most of the mounting hardware that your printer likely came with. Uh, however, you could still be looking at an expensive upgrade if you have to purchase uh, a new controller board and a new stepper and drivers and mounting hardware. The way that the motors mount to the bottom extrusion may force you to raise your entire printer just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, any cube style printer should be able to utilize this setup. Uh, however, if you implement this solution, I would love to hear how it goes. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, if you like my other videos, uh, please consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.